Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy Egan and in today's video I'm going to be featuring the new festive fall card kit from Gina K Designs. We will be doing some ink blending later in the video but first I want to do an oldie but goodie technique, the rock and roll technique. Here's a look at the festive fall card kit. There are three large 6x8 fall and Halloween stamp sets, a stencil, you also get two coordinating die sets and then matching cardstock. So here is the stamp set that I'll be using first. This is the Autumn Silhouettes stamp set with four leaves, two silhouettes, and then some sentiments. Now there are a lot of great techniques that you can use this stamp set for. And I'm going to start with the rock and roll technique. I haven't done this one in quite a while and it's always such a great technique to use with leaves. So I am starting with some white cardstock loaded in my Misty tool and I'm taking one of the leaves and I'm stamping it in Peach Bellini. Now still having that stamp in the same place in my Misty, I am taking Faded Brick and I'm tilting my ink pad and just going along the very edges of this stamp set. You can do both sides, the top, the bottom, just leaving, you only want to partial stamp it. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and just dab on the inside of that to kind of help fade this color into our peach bellini. Then I could close the door of my Misty and stamp that down. And you can see this is going to give us a great two-tone effect just like real leaves. Now later on in the video, I do also bring in a third color for that leaf, which I think really steps it up. Then I'm going to take another one of the leaves off of the stamp set, stamping this one in Key Lime first. And then I will do the same thing where I'm inking up just the very edges of it in Fresh Asparagus. Then I'll take that paper towel, kind of dab that off a little bit so it blends together really well. And this color combination is fantastic. So moving on, I'm stamping in Sweet Corn. And then once again, taking honey mustard this time and going around the very outer edges, dab away a little bit of that excess ink and stamp that down. So I really love this kind of modified version of the colors for fall. Some of them are pretty traditional, but this next one I bring in is a little different, but I think it's a really great color combination. So this one is stamping first in sea glass and then I'm going to bring in Tranquil Teal. I did a similar color combination last year and I just really loved it. It was so different than anything I had really seen before. And now you can always double stamp it if you wanted to intensify that color a little bit. I love using the Misty tool because my stamp is in the same place. I just need to ink it up with that second color. And I'm also bringing in the Misty Corners. That is going to help kind of move my cardstock up a little bit so that I can have some of these leaves hanging off of the edge. Now on that last one I had just did, I had added in Chocolate Truffle, I believe it was. Any dark brown ink will work. And I think that really stepped up that Peach Bellini and... Uh, faded brick. So I'm just continuing the process throughout this whole background. You could see I'm just creating my own random pattern on this, which I love to do. Making sure that some of them hang off of the edge. That kind of just gives it a more uh, natural feel to a random background, if that makes any sense. Now this piece of cardstock is the heavy base weight cardstock from Gina K Designs, and it is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I like starting bigger because then if I do decide to trim it down, I have that option, which is actually what I'm going to do. I will take the Master Layouts 2. This is the stitched panel from the Master Layouts 2. Hold that in place with purple tape and run it through the die cut machine. And I love using these Master Layouts because I can pick and choose what part of my stamped background that I want to use for my card front. I did also go ahead and trim another piece to layer behind this using the master layouts of one, I believe it was. And now I'm just bringing in my key ring that I have here. This is all of my swatches of the Gina K Designs cardstock, and that just helps me pick out what background color I want, which I did go with, uh, I'll have it listed down below if it was chocolate truffle or charcoal brown. I think this was chocolate truffle that I used. 
So this is what I'm using uh, also for my sentiment to tie the background into this. So I prepped my cardstock with an anti-static powder tool. I inked up the sentiment with some embossing ink, and then I'm going to sprinkle on the Gina K Designs gold embossing powder. Now, once my heat gun is really nice and hot, I let it sit for a minute or so, then I can bring it to my cardstock and melt that embossing powder. Once that's cooled down a bit, I like to take a Swiffer cloth and just rub over that to brush off any of the excess powder left behind. Then I can work on the assembly of my card. So here's a look at how everything is going to be. I'm just making sure that it lines up perfectly. And then I'm going to attach everything with the Gina K Designs Dot Runner. I really love these, this adhesive. It is a great strong adhesive once, once you push it down to secure it. But if you don't push it down right away, it does give you a little bit of wiggle room to kind of peel things up if you laid it down uh, crooked. So it's just a really great adhesive. I lined the back of my sentiment strip that I had trimmed down into just this rectangle, lined it with the Gina K Designs foam squares, and then I'm going to place that onto my card with my tweezers. So that is a look at the rock and roll technique. I hope you give it a try. It's a lot of fun to do with these images. Next, we're going to work on some ink blending because we have some beautiful new silhouette stamps. So I'm starting with a piece of the Gina K Designs layering white cardstock. And I'm gonna just kind of mask off a small rectangle area here. You can use uh, purple tape, you can use the masking magic, whatever you have on hand. And I'm using the grid lines on my glass media mat to kind of line up that tape and mask off this one area. Now I did bring the stamp set in just to make sure it did overhang. I didn't uh, want it completely ink blended. I wanted some of it to be sticking out. Now for the colors I'm gonna start with, I have Peach Bellini, Faded Brick, and Charcoal Brown. I just feel like I don't give Peach Bellini enough love, so I'm definitely working it into these cards today. So starting with Peach Bellini, that lightest color, I'm just taking a blending brush. You can use a sponge or whatever your uh, favorite ink blending tool is, and I'm adding that from the bottom, working my way up. Then I'm going to bring in the Faded Brick, and now this one, you can start from the top down and work into it however you want because we are going to cover part of it up. I just want to make sure that I'm creating a nice transition between the Peach Bellini and the Faded Brick. And what's really great with Gina's inks and the layering white cardstock is once this ink dries, it looks so seamless. It's You don't have to even do a lot of work. So here is the brown that I'm add to the very tippy top of my masked area. And I think this is a really great fall combination. You could see that peach Bellini almost makes it look like it's glowing towards the bottom. So then I'm gonna carefully pull back that post-it tape to, remove, uh, to reveal our ink blended area that we have. And then I'm gonna work on stamping. So once again, I'm using my Misty tool and my Misty corners. If you don't have the Misty corners, this is another thing I do highly recommend. I use them almost all the time, especially when I wanna hang things off the edge of my card like I do this silhouette. So I always bring that back in, make sure that the corner is right in the corner of uh, my Misty. And then I'm inking this image up with the Obsidian Amalgam ink. Now I wanna make sure I have a really great impression, so I am going to stamp this twice, which is another reason I like to use the Misty. If I'm not happy with the first impression, if I didn't push hard enough, or if my ink pad needs re-inking, I can just line that back up using the Misty corner, and I can stamp on top of it again, and that's gonna give me a perfect impression. Once I'm happy with that impression, I can work on a sentiment. So you can see I'm keeping this card very, very clean and simple. So I'm just adding that sentiment right into my ink blended area. This is also off of the Autumn's Silhouette stamp set. And I'm gonna stamp this one in the Obsidian ink as well. Now that card was so quick and simple to make that I decided to try another color combination. This time I'm using Sea Glass Tranquil Teal and the Charcoal Brown. You'll notice that these are the same colors, the two blues are the same colors that I used in my leaves. 
And I think some of the other combinations would work really well too. The key lime and the fresh asparagus, I think, would be a beautiful fall combination. And adding that dark brown to the top just kind of gives it a little bit of that fall feel. So after ink blending and then removing the masking area, I'm going to use the other silhouette image that's in here. Once again, using my Misty stamping tool and the Misty corners, making sure that's just lined up really straight. And then I can ink that up with the Obsidian ink again, which is such a great black ink. I would recommend giving this a few minutes to dry or even just, you know, 30 seconds or so, especially if you stamped it twice. You don't want to risk getting inky fingerprints all over your card front. And then once again, just pulling one of the beautiful sentiments off of the stamp set and adding that to the front of my card. So you could really whip out a lot of cards like this, even turning them into birthday cards, whatever occasion that you would need. And I decided to add in some of the clear quartz solid sequins from Gina K Designs, adding a few of them here and there in my silhouette image with the Connect glue. So there are a few ideas for you that you can use with the Gina K Designs fest Festive Fall Card Kit. I will have all of the supplies listed down below in the video description, uh, also on my blog, along with some more pictures of these cards as well. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And I'll see you next time.